I've spoken to you before about the um, habit of some traders of bailing out of a trading strategy after experiencing a large loss. And that often happens because a trader has backtested the strategy with monopoly money, no money. And when he actually put his re puts his real capital up on the table, he basically gets scared of the same loss that he anticipated in the back test, which doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Why would you get scared if something you expected to happen happens? But traders all understand that this does in fact happen. That loss shakes the confidence of the trader, even though your back tests show you should expect a loss like the one you just experienced now and then. So what happens? What happens in these cases is traders fall into three categories. They either say, I trust my back tests. Uh, the strategy is acting as I expected it to. So I had a loss. I expected that loss. I'm going to keep rolling at this same capital level. There's another trader that gets scared of that drawdown and he quits or he uh, rolls his capital into a completely different strategy. There's a third trader who sort of goes in between. He doesn't abandon the strategy, but he cuts his capital in half. Well, today I want to talk to you about what happens when you cut your capital in half on a strategy that you've tested, on a strategy that's been behaving exactly as the back test would have expected, but you just happen to have one of the larger drawdowns in the most recent month. So let's take a look at an example. Suppose you had a strategy where you would plunk down $10,000 of capital every month. You expect to win nine months a year. You expect to lose three months a year from your back testing or your real live experience. And you expect to make a return of 35% on that capital. This is very possible in the kind of trading that we do. So in this case, had you taken that large loss you see up here in April, just accepted that that is one of the types of losses and the sizes of the losses you will get in the, using this strategy, your confidence is not shaken because what you expected to happen did happen and uh, you didn't panic basically, you just continued to uh, use the strategy and by the end of the year you would have been up 35% or $3,500 on $10,000 in capital, hypothetically in this example. Now, let's take the case of the person who uh, decides to cut his capital in half after that April loss. That's what this slide shows you. And this slide shows you that if you were to do that, your profit at the end of the year would drop almost $2,000 from $3,500 to a little bit over $1,500. Why? Because you, of course, cutting your capital in half experienced less losses, but you also experienced less gains. Worse, if you were to have had that exact same pattern of gains and losses, by the second year, the trader who didn't reduce his capital would be up uh, $7,000. The trader who did reduce his capital would barely get up to, if you do the math, you'll see, he would barely get up to $3,500 by December of the next year. So by bailing out of the strategy early, uh, you cost yourself a lot of non money for really no logical reason. The strategy was behaving as you expected it to. Why are you panicking when it acts as though you expect it to? So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is if a strategy is working as you um, expected it to, and that, and that is an if, you've got to objectively look and say, is there something unusual going on here? Has the market changed? Has volatility conditions changed? Has skew changed? Has something changed which is now going to change the expectancy on this trade, basically? And uh, you've got to look at that carefully. You can talk yourself into believing that many times when, in fact, that's not true. So if objectively as you can, you say, nah, nothing's really changed, I just had an expected drawdown, 
then there's no reason to cut your capital. And if you do cut your capital, you're just making it harder on yourself because you will not have the ability to catch up, so to speak, nearly as quickly than if you had just left your capital in the strategy and just traded it every month. So another way of saying it is, what's the point of doing a back test if you're not going to follow it? Don't, don't do them at all then. But if you're going to go to the work of doing the back test and prove to yourself the strategy works, then you should trade it as you back tested it. If you do that, you'll find yourself recovering very quickly from losses that you experienced because if the strategy's as good as you say it is, it's going to naturally do that. So if you abandon the strategy or cut it in half, all you're doing is cutting your nose off despite your face. If it's a solid strategy, if the market conditions haven't changed to the point where the reason it was working has changed, assuming that's the case, you should keep the same capital level and you'll find that that will improve your returns over time. Thanks very much.